Welcome to the Momnificent Podcast. This is the place where we help parents live a happy, healthy life with their kids. We're going to show you how to connect with your child and help them even in their most difficult moments as we hear from experts in the field. I'm your host, Dr. Karin Jakubowski, an international speaker, public school principal, and former struggling student. The Momnificent Podcast equips parents with science-based strategies to help you live a happy, healthy life with your kids. Welcome. Um, I'm just going to jump right in. If we take the whole 30 minutes, great. If, if it's shorter, that's okay too. But um, I know for anybody who is joining us, this is Leah Hadley. She is a award-winning, I love that, financial planner, a certified divorce financial analyst, and a mediator, and she uses her 15 years of experience to help you. Women like you, women like you, and women you know who are either anticipating divorce, going through a divorce, post-divorce, just looking for questions and help and answers. And Leah, I love how on our last interview, we talked about, you talked about like sometimes people don't even know that they actually need a financial analyst and a planner to help them. So maybe just go briefly into what you do and then we'll dive into some of the feedback and questions and comments that came through a recent video I did on talking about money and your kids. And that's what we wanted to touch on tonight. Absolutely. Um, so we, I operate two separate businesses, Great Lakes Divorce Financial Solutions and Great Lakes Investment Management. Um, and we really help people navigate the financial decisions that come with life transitions. Um, and so when somebody is going through a divorce, there are a lot of financial decisions that need to be made. Um, regarding the settlement itself, but then also so much changes in your life. So really thinking about how to plan for your future going forward. Um, and so that's a big emphasis for our practice. We also offer portfolio management services as well. Yeah. So if you didn't catch Leah and in my interview, go to Momnificent on YouTube or any podcast platform. We just dropped that interview just in the last week. So um, a ton of information valuable for you and or someone you might know who is going through a divorce or may not even realize they need to hear this information. It was really, really great um, stuff last week that, that, um, that Leah shared. So Leah, um, maybe just start us out on maybe something you were thinking of sharing with moms who are going through a divorce and, or when they have kids, or maybe it's a divorce or not a divorce, but we wanted to talk about like kids and money. Like how do you navigate that as a parent? What are your best tips that you share? Or what have you shared with women? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart for a lot of reasons. Um, first of all, we didn't talk about this before, but before I got into financial services, I was a teacher. Um, and so I taught in, uh, I taught second grade, I taught third grade. Yeah. Um, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, and then um, I did get into financial services, and I've been in financial services for over 15 years now. Um, but I also have three wait, children wait, of my own. Wait, yeah. back up. Tell Hold me. on, time out. So you taught yeah. for second, and you have experience teaching third grade? Mm -hmm. Yes. And what, what, what was your favorite? Um, I love third grade. I love teaching third grade. I think it's a lot. It's just a fun age. It's a really fun age, yeah. <laughs> well, I started teaching first, and then I got moved to second, and then I did and I loved first and second. I was like, I will never like an older grade. And then I had an opportunity to teach third. And I was like, wait a second. I really like this. <laughs> and then I taught fourth grade for four years. And I was like, I'll never like anybody older. And they were my favorite age. But by the end of fourth grade, they're like a different creature and human than I was felt I could work with. And I, that's why I've been in elementary school. Because I'm like, I think I would just like, yeah, not make it in middle school, high school. But Oh my gosh, that's great. Wait, so what actually transitioned you to finance? So when I was teaching, I was in a very rough school in Baltimore City, um, and I got very burnt out in the classroom, and I was swimming in student loan debt at the time and had to just pay my bills. And so I took a temp job that happened to be at an investment bank, um, and then the rest is history. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's wild. And look at you today and you're helping all these moms. Okay, so when it comes to kids and, and, and talking about money, go ahead, you go first, you tell us your thoughts, your feedback and advice, and then I'm gonna throw in two comments that parents shared on my Instagram because my, my one minute video on two things you should tell your kid about money has 300, 330,000 views on Instagram. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> like that money is, crazy. is like, 
like people and money is like the hottest topic at all times. So go ahead, you go first. Yeah. Um, so in addition to my teaching experience, I do have three children of my own. And so they are now 11, 14 and 16. Um, and so we have lots of conversations about money. And that is really first and foremost, the most important tip that I have is to have open communication about money. So many adults that I work with have to get over the discomfort of even being able to open up and have that conversation about money because they never talked about money growing up. Right. And when you never talk about it, it feels so uncomfortable. I was just going to say that. That's why. Our parents didn't mm -hmm. say, well, I, it's funny because my little one minute video starts with like, did your mom ever tell you like, we can't afford that? Like, it's just things you heard and then you, you transfer what you hear and that's what you do. No. Uh, I love that's it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but also to really check yourself and recognize what your relationship is with money, right? So a lot of us grew up um, having negative experiences with money, having a negative relationship with money. Um, and so if you are somebody who feels like money has power over you, you give money control, you don't want to communicate that to your children, right? You can develop uh, an empowering mindset around money and communicate that to your children. So if you are recognizing in yourself that this is a very hard thing for you to talk about, it you know, brings up a lot of triggers for you, um, that's really important to recognize and work through before you start to open up and have those conversations with your kids. So good. It's so important. And is there anything that you do with uh, women in that area when they recognize they have those sort of patterns? Yeah. So I I do a lot with language and really recognizing and hearing what people say and acknowledging like, you know, I'll have, um, I just did an interview where I shared one of my clients told me, um, I will never earn as much as my husband earns. So, and then we had the rest of the conversation and I said to her, well, let's just stop there. Why not? Why are we operating under the assumption that you will never earn what he earns? What if we decided that that's what's important to you and we make a plan so that you can earn what he earns? Um, and it's just about making the decision and making the plan on how you're going to do it, right? Um, but why are we going to assume that you can't? You absolutely yeah. can. And it's like that, that saying that says, if you think you can, you, you can. And if you think you can't, you can't. You won't. Right. If you think you can't, you won't. Right. And Leah, right. I, I love that. You, and I think we talked about this a little bit, that I do life coaching, right? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that, right? And I, and I was telling you, like, sometimes we have these beliefs about money, and it is incredible how we can change that belief and switch, like you said, that pattern. It literally is a pattern of a belief, and you can change it. You can switch it. How you How you are showing up today with your thoughts around money does not have to be how your kids live with thoughts and patterns and beliefs about money that are not. That's right. What, how about we just say, are those the thoughts you want to have money? If they're not, you can change them. Leah develops a plan to walk you out of it. And Karin helps you with the mental space of it. Leah, you and I were just a team. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I love this. This is so powerful. It, you you don't have to be stuck where you are today. That's right. That's right. So power and sometimes it just takes someone saying that. I was just talking to a little girl. Can I divert for two seconds? Go for it. I was talking to a little girl today who was upset because someone said that they thought that they said her name and they were talking about her. And she said, no, I wasn't talking about that girl. And, and she was just in tears. And I, was, and I asked her, what are you thinking right now? And she said that I'm an idiot. I can't believe I did this, that I would have said that they would have thought. And I said, stop that right now. A, you're not an idiot. Delete, delete, delete. Like it's those little thoughts that you just have and you just believe and and it does, doesn't have to be, and it may not even be. And yet you think it. So yeah. anyway, yeah. back to you. So I, well, I love, Love what, let's go back to what you said about being honest, because that's what a parent commented in about my video. They were like, the best thing you can do for your kids is be honest with your kids about your financial limitations. They will see the true value in stuff as well. Mm. So, so you're right. Maybe it's just the more we hear it that it's okay and it's right and it's healthy. So give us an example of something you were honest about with your kid that maybe your parent wasn't with you and you did it and maybe how that worked so 
I am very fortunate that I was raised in a household where I was very empowered around money. So that's a tough one for me. <laughs> um, so but hard. I'll give you lots. I mean, there's countless examples, right? When you're raising kids, there's countless examples. Um, but I think that the issue is, right? And I think the thing that people struggle with, you know, what you had commented on the video is this thing that people, parents are often saying, I can't afford this. We, I, we can't afford this. We can't afford this, right? Um, and this language is a lot of times what kids are hearing over and over and over and over again and that may be the only conversation that they're having with their parent about money that might be it that's it <laughs> like we can't afford it and we're not talking about it um and so that's not really delivering the message because there's no broader context right um but when we look at something like okay we're planning a trip to go to um shopping for you know, we got to get a birthday present for this weekend. My, my son has a birthday party to go to. And we have, you know, $25 to spend on this birthday present. We're going to go to the store and we, we only have $25 to spend. What can we get for $25? All right. Now that we've set that limitation. So now if it's over the $25, all right, that's over the $25. That's more than what we set. That doesn't mean we can't afford it. That means that we've set this limitation. We've set the expectation. That's the budgeting, right? We've set a plan. We might not be using the word budgeting, but we've set a plan. We've set how much we're going to spend and we're going to stay within that plan. You're teaching a really important skill there, right? So it's the same idea of you don't want to spend above your means. I think that's a really important lesson that people really need to learn. Um, so that affordability piece to learn that <laughs> right <laughs> on credit cards thinking we have a life that probably we don't have like my best friend from australia was like my parents bought their house in cash they bought their car in cash like that's what they do yeah. and 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 you're right i think there's that importance of living with what you have and it's not just i want it and i'm just gonna like yeah you're, you're gonna and keep the going. you're big gonna lesson go. for young kids in particular is Sometimes there are things that we need and sometimes there are things that we want, right? And we have to prioritize the things that we need. So that difference between needs and wants, that's a lesson that you can start teaching your kids from a very early age, but it's a very important financial lesson, right? So when we think about what are the empowering lessons that you can learn early on, it's understanding needs versus wants. It's understanding how to prioritize things. Um, and so lists are really helpful. It's really nice. We all have cell phones now. We can take pictures. You know, when we're in a store, you really want that. Let's capture that. So that way, when we're making your list for your birthday or for a holiday, we don't forget about it. And then we can look through it and decide what's most important to you. What out of all of these things that you've seen that you love, what are the things that you really want to prioritize, right? Because you can't have everything. I mean, that's sort of reality. And that's an important lesson, too. Um, and so the helping them understand that. Yeah. Delayed gratification is huge. Like, what did they say? Like, take a picture of it. Like, I love that idea of taking a picture of it. Give it 24 hours. If you still feel that exact feeling you have, you watch. You may and you may not. It might fizzle out and you might not realize you, you're, you don't. You so need it right now. Yeah. And then as kids get a little bit older, if you want that, what are you going to do to earn the money in order to be able to buy it, right? You are absolutely in control of getting the things that you want, but you have to understand that that does require money. Um, and so if that's something you want, you have the power to make that happen for yourself. And did you get an allowance growing up? I didn't get just a straight allowance, but we would get money for doing, you know, different things. So if we were doing something extra. And then do you do that with your kids? I do the exact same thing with my kids. So they're all expected to contribute to the household. They all have regular chores. And if they do extra on top of that, then they get paid for that. Yeah. And how young do you start that? Oh, we started that. Uh, so I adopted all three of my children. So when they first came to our home, they were one, four, and five. The four and five-year-old probably started that when they were four and five. <laughs> Saying, yeah, yeah. Well, I did a video on allowance like, uh, like back in January, February, and I reposted it because that one just blew up with everyone's like comment of yes, no, I did, I don't. This is why? This is why I shouldn't. It was so fascinating to, to see. Well, the other thing I want to bring up, Leah, and maybe you could speak to this to help single moms or moms or women who are on such a a tight budget, like living paycheck to paycheck. I don't have extra, extra cash for anything. Like what is your advice to them? When so you want to take a, what they want too. 
and go ahead. Well, it does start with taking a critical look at your financial situation, right? So if you really are on a very tight budget and you're living paycheck to paycheck, first of all, are there ways to reduce your fixed expenses? So on a month to month basis, what is going out every single month? Are there ways to reduce those expenses so that way your cash flow is better, right? What can you do to increase your income? What are your options? It might not happen overnight, but you know, is there training that you can do? Looking at, you know, you never want to feel like you're stuck in that situation. It's really important to feel empowered as it relates to money. Um, and so it starts with that, you know, having that look at your own financial situation so that way you do have a plan to get out of that cycle. Um, but as far as communicating with your children about it, you know, it has been awesome and saying, yeah, it was funny, I said to the kids, uh, it wasn't that long ago, where I was like, we're going to try to make money. What did I say? We're going to try to stretch money. Or I said something like that. And my son was like, you can't stretch paper and coins. <laughs> So it was a great way to have the conversation, right? Um, but just being honest with them, right? Like right now we have, you know, in, in our house, and, and this is what happened in the spring, we had a big uh, bathroom expense that was not planned. Um, and so, you know, that meant we had to reduce spending in some areas. Um, and so we told the kids, you know, you let them know that this is what's going on. And so, you know, being honest with them is going to help facilitate that conversation, making it easier um, on both of you, really, right? Um, they understand it better. But it's not honest to the point of, like, putting the financial stress on them. And I think that's really important, too. Um, but more honest in the point, like, you know, we're creating a plan to prioritize what we really need. And right now, this is what is most important, you know, and focusing on that piece of it um, rather than focusing on the financial stress of it. Because you don't want to, again, put that stress on the kids. Yeah. Because they're already under so much pressure yeah. and stress and anxiety. Yeah. Like, you're right. We don't want to add, which might be why some parents don't talk about it with their kids because they feel like it's going to add a, added, added pressure uh, because possibly, possibly the parents are feeling the pressure of it, right? That's right. Wherever you feel your, your, it's gonna, your kids are mirrors of you. They're going to experience and, and feel that. Um, I love what you said about that. What is the most surprising thing when you work with women on their budget and looking like maybe, you know, they live paycheck to paycheck? What is one of the things that, that, that turns out to be a surprise of something when they look at what they could cut a cost on? Is there anything that pops out of your head like that? Oh, I mean, there's a a lot of different things, but a lot of times, um, Karen, it's more about, again, prioritizing. And so when we go back and we look at how people spend money, um, and really look, like looking at all the transactions, looking at, you know, where all the money is going, um, a lot of times people find like, you know what, this is an area where I'm spending a lot more than I need to. I saw during the pandemic in particular, people uh, started ordering in a lot more, you know, those delivery services, those kinds of things, food budgets. I mean, even though, you know, certainly people are talking about grocery and inflation and all of that. But there was also people spending more just because they were ordering in and that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, even having those conversations of like, well, if you do that a little bit less, then, you know, you can save quite a bit of money. Um, you know, for some people, it was that simple a shift, right? Um, but sometimes it's looking at, especially for people who have significant debt, how do we reduce that interest expense? So that way you have better cash flow um, and you can save money. So that's a big one. We're always looking at how do we prioritize saving money? You have money to deal with an emergency. You know, you're, you have a more solid financial foundation, especially for single moms. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because I kind of took a mortgage course once in, in, in a while ago, and they were saying that um, one, and this might be an advice you give, but if you call your credit card company and ask them to increase your limit, uh, what what is held against you and your credit score is when you're, how much you're spending and how much you your limit is, is too close. So if you extend that and you still only spend this much, it could turn out in your favor. Isn't that true? Uh, like, yeah. No, it is so true. Well. I'm better a, still be true. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. I'm a big one on understanding our own financial behavior, right? Okay. And so if you are somebody who uses up your credit card up to the limit, it is very likely that if you have that limit increase that you are going to continue okay. to accrue additional debt. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I probably would not recommend that. Um, but I talk a lot about that with clients. Like, you know, what, what have you done in the past? You know, what do you know about your own behaviors? For some people, that absolutely will work. And for some people, that will just perpetuate the problem. Um, yeah. Well, what about the, um, the, the recommendation to get the credit card that pays you back the dollar for what you spend? 
So uh, we have lots of conversations with people who have struggled with credit card debt in the past. Um, and a lot of these uh, promotional kinds of things are like incentivizing that behavior that they really struggled with. Um, and if that's something that they really struggle with, that's going to end up costing them a whole lot more in interest than any money that they're going to get back, right? Um, for some people, absolutely it works well. They can get those rewards. They can pay off their bills, and it's fine. Um, so you have to know yourself, you know, know yourself and what's going to work well for you. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll look at this one comment that a parent wrote in on. They said, I used to never talk money to my kids, but the reality of this life is that we can't afford certain things, and they need to know that too. Why, why always try to make them feel like we choose to spend less or not buy what they want because we want to make another choice. And I, um, that's, that was one of the things I said in the video. I was like, tell your child, like, it's not like I, we can't afford those sneakers. We're choosing what we're going to use our money on and maybe bring your kids into that choice because you could choose, like you said, something as simple as cook at home the next four nights to have maybe to be able to go out to the movies or whatever, something else that they wanted to do in turn where. So yeah, that, I had that's a great conversation with um, a woman who was recently divorced. She had, I think she had three kids and um, we were talking about the house situation um, and they're in a relatively small house for the size family that they are in. Um, and the kids are a little frustrated because they were used to living in a bigger home when the parents were married. Um, and so they were kind of pushing their mom and saying like, you know, we want a bigger space. Uh, and she sat them down and she had this conversation and what she said to them was, you know, we really value higher education. This is really, really important to me. So every time I get paid, I put a little bit of money into a college savings account for you. Um, and that that's really important to me that you have a good future and that, you know, this is something that we're preparing for for you to provide the support. If we go into a bigger house, I won't be able to do that for you. Um, and so we can go into a bigger house, but we're making this decision that we really want to invest in your future and that that is more important than living in the bigger home. Um, and when she told me about this conversation, I was just like, wow, <laughs> like good for you, you know? Um, and I was very impressed by the maturity of her children to even like sit down and take that conversation. And I think it speaks in for her, the fact that she's been having these conversations with her children over the years and that money is an open topic in that family. And so, you know, when they're pushing this issue, now they can sit down and have a real conversation about it. Mm. That's so good, that's so good. Um, and so you're offering a course coming up, right? Remember? Was that something you shared with me last week? Um, so we just did a workshop. We do have on our website, uh, Plan for Financial Freedom. Uh, it's a webinar that you can take, and it's six things that you can do right now to really plan for financial freedom. So you can go to planforfinancialfreedom.com, um, watch that webinar, six things that you can start doing right now to really improve your financial future um, and really be in alignment with that goal of financial freedom. That is so awesome. And what's one thing you want to leave our listeners with today? Um, to really be empowered to have those financial conversations with your kids. Even if it feels uncomfortable at first, you can start with something small. Start with something that does maybe feel okay. You know, the holidays lend themselves well to talking about some of these things when Christmas lists are being made or, you know, gift giving is a great time to talk about budgeting, um, back to school shopping, things like that. There are times of years that are just easier to open up these conversations and take advantage of those opportunities because it really does make a big difference. You know, these kids that I see, you know, sometimes I'm working with very young adults who just didn't have these conversations with their parents, they're overspending, they're struggling with debt, um, and so then they have to learn the hard way. Um, and you don't want your kids to have to be in that situation. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Okay, I thought of one more question. <laughs> okay. This is for families who have money and ha being a family that has money, you still want your kids to have a grateful attitude, right? You want them to learn to work work hard for their money. You don't want them to grow up thinking it, I, everything is going to be like this and I don't have to do anything to get it. So so for a parent in that situation that, that, that has money and they, they want to create that in their child to be responsible, grateful, always 
you know, value what they have and, and, and save and the importance of saving, how, how, what are your recommendations on steps to do that? Um, when sometimes it, it can be hard to get them there because they're so used to what they've had in that life they've lived that they just think it'll always be that way. Um, this is a really interesting question because I actually work with a lot of people who, um, and, and so I'm going to answer this for people, not just for people who have money, but for everybody. So regardless of your wealth situation, we teach that there are four things that you can do with money. You can save money, you can invest money, you can spend money, or you can donate, right? You can give. Um, and it's really important to understand that you have choice when it comes to money. And the reason I say it doesn't matter how much money you have is I work with so many adults who have come into wealth for the first time. They didn't grow up with money and they have no clue what to do with it. Um, and it's actually very stressful for a lot of them. Um, and some of them make some pretty big financial blunders because again, they just don't have any clue what to do with it. Um, and so being empowered to know that you do have choice when it comes to money, that you do have decisions to make and that those decisions and this is why I think it's so important to talk money in the family. A lot of times people are always pushing talk money in the schools, but I think it's really important to talk money in the family because it's all about your values, right? There are lots of people who are extremely charitable um, and they donate wonderfully and they give to the community. They make such a big difference in the, the communities that they live in. If you're growing up in a family like that, it's important to communicate that value, to share that with your children, get them involved in that, right? Um, help them to understand what that means um, because that's a lot of responsibility for some of these families, right? Um, and so understanding that there is choice, that there is intentionality, um, and that you really can um, bring your values into the conversation around money. I love that. What were the four? Donate was the one that stood out to me. <laughs> oh, save? Save, spend, and or invest. And spend. Invest. Yeah, save, spend, and invest, and donate. Oh, I like that. And I like how you just shared how whether you have, no matter how much you have, those are That's right. four uh, areas you can you can help kids with. That's so cool. That's so awesome. I love that, Leah. I always love talking with you. Thank you. <laughs> We're gonna have to schedule another Instagram live or another podcast interview. Uh, but thank you so much for taking the time to share this with uh, those listening right now and those who are gonna listen to this at a later time. And if you have questions, Leah, how can they find you? On Instagram, you can find me at Watch Her Thrive. Um, and we do have a free Facebook community, Watch Her Thrive. So check that's, us out. That's awesome. And for those of you who don't know who I am, Dr. Karen Jakubowski, an elementary school principal and host of the podcast, Momnificent. And I do life coaching on the side for kids and moms, mothers, women. Uh, we're just so excited. We just, Leah and I just have a heart to empower women and just, you know, know today, feel, feel good and encouraged. You're doing an awesome job. And, um, yeah, we just, we recognize that sometimes we don't hear it enough. So thank That's you. Right. And thank you, Leah. That's all we've got for this episode of the Momnificent podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would be honored if you would subscribe and rate if you really liked it. I know wherever you're listening right now, it might not be the best time to leave a comment, but feel free to leave a question, a review, or a comment at any time. And until next time, remember, don't worry, be happy.